Okay, so there's our, our search routine. Let's go down, sure enough, I fixed it. Let's go down and let's write public static uh, search. And what we're supplying is, we'll use the actual same definitions here. So there's a little trick to writing subroutines is just use the same words over again for the parameters. So I want the number defined. I want an integer array of numbers that I'm going to search. And I want int, we'll call it uh, left side and uh, int right side. So how would you split the phone book once? I got to find the middle. So middle is found. Now we get to use our math skills. Well, but that won't always work. I've got left and right here. So in terms of left side and right side, it's the average of left side and right side. So left side plus right side divided by two. It'd be the halfway point. See how bad our math skills are? And then what? How would you know you'd found it? Let's do the special case first. If, how would you know it's in there? This is an array of things. So if ordered numbers at the middle position happens to be the thing that we're looking for, then I guess we're done and we'll return middle position. So that's just doing one of them. What if I didn't find it? What would you send back? Yeah. Supposing we'd searched through everything and we didn't find it, at some point the didn't find would be minus one. Okay, so now the problem is, is that this thing should be repeated more than once. Okay, so we have to do it a bunch of times. How many times do you think we're going to have to do it? Don't really know, right? So for now, since we don't really know how many times we're going to have to do it, that's got to be a while loop. And for now, I don't know the condition, so I'll just put true in there. And the stuff that repeats is that stuff. So do this a bunch, split it a bunch of times. Calculate the middle is all I'm all I'm saying. Okay, and yeah, I know that's unreasonable, but we'll fix that in a minute. Okay, so now let's talk about this uh, inside thing here. If you hadn't. If we do, if we do the, the calculate the middle and we don't find the thing, what would you do? Have to change either the left side or the right side. So if we go and we search for 132, we'd split it in here and we'd said, oh, okay, we, we obviously, we, we checked this one and it wasn't right. Then the next step is to say, oh, okay, well, is this, where does, which side should it be on? Which side should we search? Okay, and so what we've done here is we've got this thing as left and this side as right. And we've calculated the middle. And we've checked the middle and we've said, this isn't the one we're looking for. So 
what do you do? See if it's bigger or smaller. If it's bigger, then it has to be on this side. So left needs to advance over to here to check only between there and there. Right, and conversely, it works the other way for the other one. So we'll do the test here. We, that, so that's the didn't find. So now we know, or that's the found case. The didn't find is if the number to find is less than whatever number is at the middle, So the number we're looking for is someplace between here and here. What has to happen? Right equal to middle. We're not interested in all that stuff over there on the right hand side. So right needs to move down to this point so that the left and the right only go from here to here. So if the number is smaller, then middle becomes whatever right is. So if the number is smaller, um, other way around, right becomes whatever middle is. It's right <coughs> side. And yeah, I'm going to write an else just because there really are only two choices here. So other choice is the left side takes the value of the middle. Now let's talk about the reason for ending the loop. We keep, we keep going, yeah, what we're doing is we're, we're taking right and we're moving it down here, and then conceivably if we're taking right and we're moving it down here, we take right and we move it down here, we take left and we move it this way. What's the case when we're, don't, when we're done? If left, if left ever gets on the wrong side of right, or even if they're equal, then we're done. So if uh, so, while uh, left side is great is uh, less than or equal to right side, I'll try that. Um, we'll find out. I think it, I think you want it if if left and right are the same, you still want to do it because you haven't checked to see whether or not you've landed on the right one. So think of the case of if there's only one item in there, left and right side will be the same. If that's the item that you're looking for, you have to check that case. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm pretty sure that the equals belongs there just so that you still calculate the middle and get it to work. Okay. And so what we'll do in the, the driver routine is we'll add in something after we've searched to just print out the position. Just so that we can see what the value is. And we'll give it a try and see what happens. Position is 6. We were searching for 132, and that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's there. Let's try one that's at the extreme bound. So let's change the position to uh, minus 55. and see if it finds that case. That works. 
We'll try it on the other side of the equation, which is 444, four, four, which is the endmost one on that side. Hmm. Hmm. That thing means it's still running. So we've got an infinite loop for some reason, so it mm, isn't doing that one. Middle here probably needs to be adjusted by one since it's integer, integer division, my initial guess would be that there's got to be a plus one in there someplace. Just because inter integer division is going to throw you off. We'll go back and we'll check the minus 55. Wouldn't it be nice to have unit tests? I wouldn't have to keep modifying the same code. Mm, no. Those bounds are a little bit of a problem. Um, so maybe we'll take the uh, plus one and we'll add it there. It's eventually going to be something like that. Okay, I'm not going to monkey with this too far because it's an end condition that at some point we can probably get right if we play with it a little bit. Uh, the code that I've got online has those two conditions set, done just right, whatever it happens to be. So we'll just move on here. And we can always go look at the sample code. Okay, so that's more or less the iterative solution. Sort of kind of works. Uh, I guess we didn't do uh, not found. So let's just put in a number that doesn't exist that's someplace in the middle. Uh, 432. And wonder whether or not it finds not found. Still a problem. So still all the same sort of issue. Close enough for now. Um, okay, that's more or less the iterative solution. We've got just enough time to do the recursive solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire piece of code and I'm just going to duplicate it um, and paste it in here again. And we'll just try a search that's recursive so I can borrow some of the same stuff. And I'm going to uh, wipe out all of that stuff for now and just leave it mostly empty. Okay. So, started out the same way. We're going to do a search, and here's the place where we're starting. So, let's talk about the yeehaw condition. I guess We're that's. Still in the interrupt I got. Oops, wrong one. I guess I should go to the other one, shouldn't I? Yeah. Get rid of that one. Go back to this guy. And I'm going to uh, wipe out at least a fair portion of it. I'm just going to leave the if statement in here temporarily. <coughs> And we'll, we'll go back to the case of talking about the regular condition, int middle equals left side plus right side more or less divided by 2. Okay, There's the case of success. Hit it in the middle, we got it. What's the way you do recursion for in general? Call the same method. Call the same method with a smaller portion of the problem. So we'll still do the same thing that we did before. If uh, the number defined 
is less than the one in the middle. Call the same routine, which is search again. We're still going to give it the first two parameters. Here's the number we're looking for. Here's the ordered numbers. I always think of this as phone a friend for recursion. Here I'm going to give you this stuff and you can do the problem instead of me. So I'm going to give you the number to find. I'm going to give you the ordered numbers. And if it's on the less than side, I'm going to say, oh, you still have to search from the left side. But now I know that the thing that you want, the right side, is actually just the middle. Almost easier to talk about, isn't it? Okay. And even better yet, it's actually the middle minus 1 because I already looked at the middle one for you, so it's got to be something to the left of, of even that one. Okay, So one step to the left of the, the middle one. Okay, And we'll write the else here, because it's really only a binary choice in this case. If it wasn't on the left side, then I guess you should search the right side instead. And the right side is everything from the middle plus one all the way to what was on the right. Does that make sense? Now, there's just one thing missing from here, is that in this case, I've turned around to done phone a friend and said, here, you go do the searching for me. Here's the subset that I have to search for. They're going to come back, and they're going to tell me where they found it. And right now, I'm not doing anything with that information about where they found it. Okay. And so the one thing that has to go in here is send back whatever they said. Okay? So this is the, you know, they're going to go find it. Whatever position they report as having found or not found is fine with me because I didn't find it. I'll just repeat whatever they said back up to whoever asked me. Okay? So if they say not found, if I didn't find it and, they've, and they haven't found it, then I guess we're done. If they actually found it, they'll tell me where it was and I can pass that word back. And notice it doesn't matter how many levels deep they go afterwards, they're going to play the same game. They're going to turn around, they're going to rip the phone book in half, they're going to pass half of the phone book off to one of their friends and say, you go do the search, tell me where you found it or didn't find it. Okay? And so you need this return statement in here to pass back whatever they said up the chain of command. Okay. What about that thing then? You could just get rid of it, but when's it ever going to end? It has to end like we've got the found case in here. Where's the minus one then? You still have to say not found. So let's go back to what we've always done for methods, which is to say we'll calculate the uh, uh, the, uh, the left side and the middle side. If we find it, that's great. If for some reason uh, left side is greater than or equal to right side, then return minus one. So I'm just going to move that reason for returning back up a bit. So either you find it in the middle or 
you've run out of things to search or it's got to be either on the left or the right. And you end up with code that looks more or less like that. And hopefully the compiler is now happy with me. Yes, it is. And so we'll just run that one and see whether that works. Didn't find it because the position was 432. We'll try the uh, 132. See if it finds that one. Found it in position 6. Gee, I wonder if it finds the minus 55. Found it in position 0. wonder if it finds the one at the end. Wow, even easier to write. Okay, so here's one of the interesting things about recursion is that sometimes when you do an iterative problem, it actually seems more difficult to think of it iteratively. And then you go, well, hold it here. Maybe there's a simpler way. What I'll do is I'll just look for it, and if I don't find it, I'll hand it off to somebody else, and people get that, <laughs> right? You can actually look at the recursive solution and go, wow, that's pretty straightforward. If I don't find it, I give them this subset, they go find it, I'll wait, whatever you say is fine with me, send it back. Done. And the only trick to the game is to make sure that you get the reasons for stopping in there. Either you find it or don't find it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so this was my point the other day about sometimes recursive solutions are actually easier, and believe it or not, they actually look easier for what appears to be a more difficult problem. Right? Instead of the mathy type stuff that we talked about for recursion, here's a perfect example of something that seems rather complicated, and yet you can write the recursive solution pretty much off the top of your head relatively easily. Okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to start to use the recursion for doing something useful. So the next set of things that we're going to explore more or less is trees, and we're going to use recursion because that just ends up being a natural way of dealing with it.